everyone and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel if it is your first time here. My name is Jess and today I'm going to be sharing with you my summer TBR and um, I can hardly believe that um, I'm sharing my summer TBR to be honest. I know that 2020 has been a little bit of a write-off year and all kinds of topsy-turvy because of everything that is going on but honestly doesn't feel like summer. Where is the year going? What is happening? Uh, it's just just crazy. Um, so in terms of my spring TBR there were only two books that I didn't read off that which were Shiver by Maggie Stiefvater and The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden both of which I'm going to park for a little bit. Um, so if you're not familiar with these videos I am a mood reader which means that I like to pick things up depending on how I'm feeling and sometimes just on a bit of a whim but I do like to have some form of structure to my reading plans so every season I pick 10 or so books uh, that I want to read for definite and seeing as I read roughly five or six a month I do leave myself some wiggle room to pick stuff up just because um, so yeah without further ado let's jump in and start talking about some books so the first book I am putting on my list is This Must Be The Place by Maggie O'Farrell this is women's literary fiction and we're following a couple called Claudette and Daniel and Claudette is a reclusive film star who lives in the Irish country countryside and Daniel is an American linguist um, and between them they have five children and two failed marriages um, and someone from Daniel's past gets in contact or reappears or something and sets Daniel off on a journey and then I think we flip between past and present, past being uncovering why Claudette became a recluse at the height of her career um, and why Daniel carries around so much guilt. So it says on the back, this must be the place crosses continents and time zones, creating a portrait of an extraordinary marriage, the forces that hold it together and the pressures that drive it apart. So yeah, it sounds really, really interesting. I've only ever read one other Maggie O'Farrell book and I enjoyed that immensely. So definitely looking forward to picking this one up. The next one is quite an interesting one and it's The Bees by Laileen Paul. This is a contemporary dystopian thriller but the twist is that it is set within a beehive. Um, so we have Flora717 who is a bee at the lowest level of bee society. She is a sanitation bee so her only role is to clean the orchard hive where she resides and to accept obey and serve but Flora isn't like any normal sanitation bee and she does something she um, acts bravely during an attack or something like that which triggers her rise within the ranks of the hive um, but she then goes on to break some kind of sacred hive law and the story sort of rapidly unfolds from there and it just sounds so different. I've got no idea what it's going to be like. I've picked it up and put it down a number of times, but I am just fascinated to see how a story like this is going to develop and progress and what it's going to be like. So yeah, um, no pun intended for that last comment. Um, so yeah, just another one that I'm going to add to my list. Then we have The Underground Railroad by Carlson Whitehead. This is literary fiction and we're following the story of a young slave called Cora who is on a cotton plantation in Georgia and it says on the back um, her existence is made even more hellish by her status as an outcast among her fellow Africans so when a newly arrived slave tells Cora of a way to escape she decides to join him um, and the interesting part of this is that the Underground Railroad in this book takes the physical form of a railroad so it is a dilapidated boxcar pulled by a steam locomotive picking up fugitives wherever it can but Cora is pursued by a slave catcher who has some kind of obsession with her um, and yeah that's kind of the story. This has been on my TBR for a long time. I shared it recently in a stack of books by black authors which I was planning to pick up. I shared that over on my Instagram so definitely adding this one and going to get to it soon. Next up we have a book which has been recommended to me so so many times and that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. So anytime that I mention that I own this book, anytime that I mention that I really enjoyed Dave Lucy Jones and the Six by the same author, people say to me, oh you must pick up Evelyn Hugo, so it's going on the TBR. So this is the story of 1950s Hollywood icon Evelyn Hugo and 
one day Evelyn decides that she is going to finally tell her story to the world and she picks a relatively unknown journalist to reveal all her hidden secrets to including the truth behind her seven husbands and that's pretty much all I know but honestly if this is anything like Daisy Jones and the Six then I think I'm going to absolutely absolutely adore it because that book was so good and so realistic that um, I think I said this in my wrap-up at the time but I kept finding myself stopping to google the things that Taylor Jenkins Reid mentioned because I genuinely thought I believed the book and I thought that it was real um, and she just had a really good captivating writing style that really sold the story so very excited to read this one it's officially going on the TBR and I will get to it sometime this summer. Next up I have picked White Chrysanthemum by Mary Lynn Bracht. This is a book which I purchased after hearing Krista from Books and Jams talk about it. It's historical fiction set in World War II 1943 in Korea and we're following two sisters Hannah and Emmy who are female divers um, and one day something goes down and um, Hannah is forced to save Emmy from a Japanese soldier um, and as such Hannah is taken away to become one of the Japanese comfort women and then we have a present day storyline set in 2011 following Emmy who still lives in South Korea as she continues to struggle to come to terms with the sacrifice that her sister made so I read quite a lot of World War II fiction but I have read very little set in the Far East during World War II um, I believe that this is meant to be really emotional and hard-hitting and um, I'm interested to read it and learn more about this time period in history because as I said it's not although I read a lot of World War II to this location um, is something a little bit different for me so another one that I'm adding to the list. I must have been feeling in the mood for World War II fiction when I set this TBR because I picked another one this time set in 1940s England and it's We Must Be Brave by Frances Liardet. So this is the story of a woman called Ellen and Ellen has known her whole life that she doesn't want children and then one day she finds a little girl uh, seemingly abandoned at the back of a bus which is fleeing the Blitz in Southampton and Ellen rescues her and brings her into her home um, and yeah I think the story kind of unfolds from there. It says on the back, We Must Be Brave is an epic and intensely moving novel about the ways we rescue one another and the astonishing tenacity of the human heart. It's also been blurbed all over the back and all over the inside by some very well-known authors including uh, Digalia Owens of Where the Crawdads Sing. So I'm very much looking forward to this one and um, yeah popped it on the list. Then we have Found Wanting by Robert Goddard. Robert Goddard has long been one of my favourite mystery thriller writers but it has been an absolute age since I have picked one of his books up so I thought that this time around I would remedy that and add one on to my TBR. So this particular book we are following the story of Richard and Richard is randomly or seemingly randomly um, approached by his ex-wife one day totally out of the blue having not seen her for several years and for reasons known only to Richard he agrees to carry a briefcase to Brussels for his ex-wife for a lump sum of money but the story or the plot kind of explodes from that point and Richard is involved in something much bigger than he realises. Something which also happens to involve the fate of Anastasia, the Anastasia of the Romanovs. Um, so yeah I believe that this is kind of a fast-paced mystery thriller that takes place all over Europe. Um, I always enjoy the plot and the pace and the twists that Robert Goddard throws in. I find these books really easy to read and they're not too creepy which is just perfect for me so um, yeah just another one that I will pick up at some point this summer and that I'm looking forward to reading. Then we have Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo and adding this to my list is just part of my desire to read absolutely everything that Lee Bardugo has ever written. This book was actually sent to me by the lovely Hayley from Hayley is Reading and I'm sorry that it, it has taken me so long to pick it up. It got buried at the bottom of my TBR pile and I've only just uncovered it and realised that I still had it. So this book is part of the DC Icons series which to my understanding is a bunch of YA authors that are writing their takes on famous DC heroes. So obviously we have Wonder Woman and Lee Bardugo and then as another example um, Sarah J Maas has written Catwoman um, and it's just their take and 
I think that's probably all the explanation that you need. Um, I really engage with and like Lee Bardugo's writing style, so I have every hope that this book will be brilliant. Um, also, you know, partial to a bit of um, Wonder Woman. So yeah, I think it should be good and I look forward to picking it up. And then I am adding Clockwork Angel by Cassandra Clare. Having finally finished uh, just recently the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare, I'm eager to continue on and pick up some more of her books. So this is the first one in her Infernal Devices series. It's set in Victorian London but within the same world or realm that Cassandra Clare had created for Mortal Instruments. So we have Downworlders such as vampires and werewolves and we have shadow hunters. So our protagonist is a young woman called Tessa Gray and she takes refuge with the shadow hunters in London and the story unfolds from there. I really really liked Cassandra Clare's writing style in the Mortal Instruments. Um, I did find them quite tiresome by the end simply because of the level of angst and the whole will they won't they romance scenario between Jace and Clary but in terms of the writing and the world that Cassandra Clare created I really liked that so I'm looking forward to trying these ones out um, and seeing what I think. I've heard that Cassandra Clare's books only get better the more you progress through them and The Infernal Devices as a series is much loved uh, and much talked about in the book community so I am intrigued to see what I think. Um, yeah and I'm intrigued to see how she's going to move the world that she's created to a time period like Victorian England as well. Um, so just another one to add to the list that I'm looking forward to reading um, and at some point this summer I will get to this one. Next on the list we have Queenie by Candice Carty Williams. This is actually the first book that we're going to read in my new book club. Um, although it doesn't officially launch until July, for anyone who joins ahead of the 1st of July, we're doing kind of an impromptu group read just to get to know everyone really. Um, and this is the one that I picked. So this was long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction this year. We are following 26 year old Queenie, who is a British woman of Caribbean descent. And some of the members of the book club have already started this and they said that the opening few chapters are actually quite graphic. Um, I think that Queenie, um, she breaks up with her boyfriend and then she basically goes on to have a string of sexual encounters with various unsuitable and unavailable men and I think that it's described quite uh, graphically in the opening chapters and then in the second half I understand that the book picks up a little bit more. Um, I thought that with everything that was going on this was an excellent time to pick this book up because I think it also covers topics such as microaggressions, um, racism, mental health, female friendships um, and that kind of thing. So uh, very much looking forward to picking this one up and discussing it in the book club. If you want to know more information about the book club I will leave a link to the page with all the information on in the description bar down below. Um, as I said this isn't the official pick because we don't start till July but I just wanted to do a little bit of an impromptu read um, and I thought that this would be a good one that would give us lots to talk about. So yeah that's that. And then finally I have four books which I'm kind of going backwards and forwards on. Um, I'm viewing them in two pairings and I'll probably pick one of each. So first of all we have Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon and then we have Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. So although I read a lot of YA fantasy I don't read a ton of YA contemporary um, although I do own some mostly because um well because <laughs> i'm not the target audience for this type of genre and i feel that very acutely when i'm reading contemporary uh, but um, i thought that picking one of these might give me a nice good easy breezy light option for later on in the summer so first up we have everything everything and this is the story of maddie who is basically allergic to the world and she hasn't left her home in 17 years and then a boy called Ollie moves in next door they strike up a friendship online and the friendship begins to develop into something a little bit more um, it says on the back everything everything is about the crazy risks we take for love um, and I've heard very good things about this so that is one possibility and then we have love and gelato so this is the story of Lena who goes to spend the summer in Tuscany um, as part of her mother's dying 
wish I'm sobbing already um, to go and discover more about her absentee father um, having been to Tuscany I know how beautiful a place it is um, and I think it'll make me nostalgic for our trip um, but yeah I think it's pretty much that it's set against a gorgeous Italian backdrop there's a little bit of a summer romance and a man who may or may not be Lena's father so there's a little bit of mystery as well so possible that I'll pick both up but more likely that I will choose one of those to read and then the other two are not the same genre but I just couldn't decide between the two and I felt like putting them both on might overwhelm my TBR a little bit so we've got Moonshine by Jasmine Gower and then we have SSGB by Len Dayton so first of all Moonshine is set in a fantastical version of 1920s Chicago um, and we're following our protagonist Miss Daisy Dell it says on the back um, she is a modern girl stylish, educated and independent, keen to establish herself in the city but reluctant to give up the taboo magic inherited from her grandmother. Her new job takes her to unexpected places and she gets more attention than she had hoped for. When bounty hunters start combing the city for magicians, Daisy must decide whether to stay with her new employer even if it means revealing the grim source of her dazzling powers. I mean this just sounds fascinating, I love the concept of blending 1920s Chicago with um, magic and it yeah it kind of sounds like they've taken the idea of prohibition but applied it to magic rather than alcohol and I'm interested to see how that will play out and then the other one I mentioned was SSGB by Len Dayton as I said before I obviously was in the mood for some kind of World War II um, historical fiction but this is with a slight twist because it's February 1941 and British command have surrendered to the Nazis Churchill has been executed and Britain is now occupied by the Germans um, so yeah this is kind of an alternative alternative scenario type book um I've not really ever heard many people talk about this book I think it's quite old uh, but it's just always one that has appealed to me I picked it up second hand a while ago and yeah I'm just curious curious to read it so probably one of those two as well can get added on to this list at some point so there you go, they are all the books that I am adding to my summer TBR. Let me know what your reading plans are this summer, let me know if you've read any of the books that I've talked about and what you thought, whether I should prioritise some and maybe let some others slide off the list. Um, I always love to chat more with you guys in the comments. Um, as always, if you enjoyed this video please give me the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Um, thank you very much for watching, take care, stay safe and I'll see you all soon.